In this lesson, we'll finish linking Rocket Randy's hands and feet to the driver control set. We'll also take a look at an alternate expression for tracking two null objects in separate composition. Now, currently when I'm working with Rocket Randy's hand here and moving it around, it's moving really slow. The reason for this is because I'm working on my laptop. And with my laptop, the graphics card can't handle the fast draft mode that it's in. So it actually works a lot faster if I'm in the adaptive mode with the real-time renderer. But what I'm going to do is actually try a different piece of code here that I've just pasted in from the last lesson. Oops, and we want to do value plus again, value plus. Okay, so let's, we'll just try this again to see if this slows things down. Oops, I don't want to do that. Three quarters, we'll put it there. See if this slows things down. I mean, technically it should because it's a little bit more of a complicated calculation, I would assume. No, it's about the same. The only nice thing about this little piece of math here is that if your compositions happen to be different sizes or something, it still works. I'm trying to think too is if if you were to move one character, what would happen? Yeah, nothing happens. Because the whole character is moved together, so it's very relative based on the character's positioning, which could be problematic because we want it to track directly. Right now, it's pulling the data from the positional data, but it's not—it's not tracking it properly as it's parented relative to other objects, which is problematic. Okay, so I've gone through and tested a few different things to figure out how to actually make this work well, and what I found is I found a little piece of code on CreativeCow.com that Dan Ebert's put out, and it actually works really, really well. And so let's just take a little look at what's going on with the code. Essentially, I have the rotation like we, we did earlier, the rotation being pulled directly from the other composition. And I also have this positional code, which I got from a combination of two bits of code off um, Creative Cal. And this is essentially saying to take the anchor point of L, which is the layer that we're following, which is this controller right here, this control object, the hand. Um, so it's that saying to take that anchor point of that, put its position to the world, and then add the add whatever value to it. And that allows me to position it manually, but then continue to influence it with the root controller. And then what I have is this little piece of code called parent.fromworldp. And what that does is that takes into account the fact that it's parented to another object. So what I had to do when the code was originally just this line up here is I had to unparent the object, which was making it really risky and disruptive because I had to actually start deconstructing the puppet. So I figured this chunk out and this actually allows me to keep this, keep the puppet in. I didn't figure it out. I found this chunk, this little piece here. So what we're going to do is just copy this code and we'll paste it into the other arm. Let's go into the driver. We'll go into, just grab the other hand here, go to the positional data, alt click that, paste it. And instead right now it's trying to, it's grabbing from the left hand. I should be able to just turn this to right because my naming convention is fairly solid. And there you go. You've seen it hop over. Now, if we look in here, it's actually adding the offset of the existing hand. So what I can do to put this so that there's no offset is just put zero and zero, making sure that's to zero. If you disable this, the hand will actually move to zero and zero in the composition. But that's not really a concern. So there you go. That hand's working there. The main thing about this code, which is so important, is not that I can grab and move move this controller around just specifically, but also that if the rest of the character moves and the hands go with it, it actually influences these objects here that are parented because it's looking at its world position no matter what it's parented to. So no matter what happens to this, these hands will move. What I was having a problem with is the code I was using before was only tracking the movement of this wrist within the parents. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the side one. So we'll just grab the same little chunk of code here. We'll do side one, and we want the, the right hand on the side. Let's go to the positional data. We'll click and then paste that. There we go. Now the hand will move. Now with these, the side hands, I've actually, I, I want 
I want to like have this position that you see this character's hands in to be mimicked on the side. So I have to actually offset them manually here. I'm just gonna move it back because I want this to be the rest pose. So the elbow is slightly bent and the hands to the side. It could be a little more forward. I'll do the same thing here. So because of this little bit in here that I have value plus, it allows me to manipulate this controller here and put the hand where I want it and still have it ultimately influenced by the driver object. As you can see, I can move that and I can move this and the hand goes with it. Okay, let's get the rotation on that really quickly. We'll just grab the, we'll grab the rotation value from this one here. We'll just grab that little piece of rotation code here and we'll put it to this one. And just make sure we change the layer to hand right. There we go. And we'll also do the same thing for the three quarter guy. And actually, we could probably just copy this code and just paste it in the hand right rotation, alt click, paste. And that should work. Let's just have a look. Rotate this. Yeah, it's working fine. I'm going to put this guy's rotation value back to zero. Okay, so we have the hands taken care of. So we've already learned a pretty valuable lesson in how to get two puppet, separate puppets actually working together. Uh, the next thing will be is to track the rest of the body parts together. Maybe we'll do the feet, but then we want to make sure all these other null objects are following. So when this piece here moves, uh, it actually influences the rest of the character. All right, so what we'll do next here is maybe link up the actual legs, since that's pretty much the same as the hands, and it's easier. So let's do the three-quarter puppet first, and I'm just going to copy this code here from the hand, and then we'll move down to the left leg, the left foot. Let's go down here and do the position first. Alt click, paste. Uh, let's see if we can remember the name. I think it's ankle. Should throw me an error if I don't have it right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. There's a 3Q. 3Q. There we go. That should work. No. Okay. Let's just try to grab it this way. We'll do this the hard way. I'm going to grab this value here and then replace it with the actual ankle left. There we go. And. Okay, and this one apparently has no parent, which it should though. Ankle left and right should technically, let's have a look here. This should be parented to the master. Okay, so these should have a parent. Everyone should have a parent in this project. Okay, so that's parented to the master. That should work now. Okay, it looks like these ones have no parent either, so we need to parent these two to the actual master as well. So C master, okay. That's good. And let's make sure that side rocket Randy also has his parent, his, his two feet parented to the master. Yeah, he does, okay. So it was just this guy that was wrong. Pursue again. Enable that, that should all work just fine. And I'll delete the offset. So I'm just going to go zero and zero. The leg should go back where it was. And I should be able to copy this code and put this also on the other leg position. So let's paste that. Control V. And we'll put this to DC3QRT. Now, I think what I'd like to do is get rid of that 3Q. Well, let's put this to zero and zero. I want to get rid of that 3Q. I'm going to see if I can do that. Usually what happens is if you change something, typically the expression should update. So if I do change the name of this controller, we should get an update. But if it doesn't update it automatically, we'll get an error thrown and we'll have to go find where the problem is. Okay, there we go. That worked fine. Let's do the same thing for the side, side puppet. We're going to grab ankle right. Here's this guy. Ankle right. Position paste that and let's make sure the right one yeah okay and then we'll get rid of the offset zero and zero so it should just be sitting there where it was perfectly okay and then we'll do the next leg 
Let's do this one. Position, Alt click, paste it, and then we'll just make sure it's referring to the left ankle. Okay, there we go. And then just delete the offset. There we go. Now the leg should essentially, it might not be exactly where it was, but we can just put it back so that we're at the perfect side. I'm just going to move this over until the legs are together. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So let's go into the driver and have a look at what's going on. We have our two legs, and we should be able to lift them up, and they should follow each other nicely. There you go. We now have this front and three-quarter puppet. We have the hands and legs. We have to do the rotation really quickly. So we'll get R and R, and maybe we'll go back to the up here to the hand. And just grab that code from here. And we'll just change the name accordingly. You can obviously use the pick whip method if you want. So rotation, alt click, pasting that code. And I just need to change the source. So that'll be DC ankle, right? Hopefully that works. Yep. Okay, and I'm just copying this and I'm gonna paste this here. And that'll be DC ankle left. Okay, that worked. And then we'll do the side guy, same thing. Rotation and rotation, just by pressing R, paste. And then we wanna grab ankle left, LFT, and then this one will be, should actually just work as it is because we were grabbing the right ankle. So now we'll go back and test before we wrap up this video, go in here. on this one and let's just double check those rotations make sure they're both working yep that worked okay so that pretty much covers the feet and hand controls so in the next lesson what we'll do is link up the rest of the controls including the master the center and all of the torso head and neck pieces so getting those null objects talking to each other if you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.